guys, Creepy Guy, and I'm back with another video. This time I'm going to fulfill sort of uh, some requests that I've had about what kind of gear I've carried with me. And so I decided to put together a couple videos on the backpacking and hiking gear that I carry with me. Now, I'd like to point out this is not the bushcraft type gear or anything like that. It's not very minimalistic, although my pack is, uh, is for the most part under 20 pounds, so it's fairly lightweight. Um, just keep in mind that the gear that I use is going to be slightly different than what you have. These are just the things that I've I've learned to use. They're not, you know, the end-all, be-all, best item for anything. But it'll give you an idea of the uh, the stuff that I use. So I figured I'd break this up into a couple parts so it's not too long. So we're going to talk about clothes and the clothes that I wear in the winter and in the summer. We're headed into the winter season, so that's probably what a lot of folks will concentrate on. But for the most part, my clothes is about the same. So um, to start with, let's talk about feet real quick. Um, I carry my trail runners. I love the trail runners. If you can do it, you know, definitely wear the trail runners. These are uh, La Sportiva Wildcats. Um, they're pretty good. I have these sole inserts in here. You can find those at the, uh, the REI and that sort of thing. I am a big fan of gators, so I also wear the uh, Dirty Girl Gators. Um, make sure to take the, the Velcro stuff that you use and epoxy that to the back of your shoes, otherwise it'll peel off. The little sticky stuff that they send you just doesn't work. These, for the most part, are all right. They're starting to get wore out. I've got some holes in them. I've done some patching, and as you can see, and for the most part, I like them. They're nice, they're breathable, they're not waterproof. They're just designed to keep stuff out of your shoes. I do wish they were a little higher. So I may look to replace these in the springtime. Um, for socks that I use only with my trial runners, I use the right socks. Okay, that's W-R-I-G-H-T. They are essentially a, a double layer in one sock. They're, uh, they're really nice. I've never gotten any blisters using these. So I really like these with my trail runners. I use the, uh, the ankle uh, length because they tend to, see, uh, tend to get pretty hot in the summer. Um, but you could use the crew length if you wanted to. Whatever floats your boat. Uh, in the winter, I'm going to be using my boots. Uh, these are the Keen Tarhiga 2 boots. Uh, I like these. A lot of toe, uh, a lot of toe room. And I just use... Um, these standard REI gaiters, uh, they just Velcro up the front. These are nice because they Velcro to everything, as you can see. Um, they're nice. They've got the, uh, the nice rubber loop that goes underneath the boot. I've never had a problem with these, uh, and they, um, they stay up. And I, I really like gaiters, especially in the winter. This is going to keep, as you can see, mud and everything off there. They do add a little bit of heat, but they're, they're really worth it. Look into a pair. Um, so I've had issues with the, the Keens and the socks getting blisters. So what I've done in the past is I've taped my feet using Luco tape. You can find that on Amazon. I like it a lot better than moleskin. Um, and, and it's worked out well for the most part. But I, I tried a different sock combination on the last couple trips using these, uh, these engine uh, toe socks. And then just using a pair of uh, wigwam, just like wool socks, over them. So this double sock combination has worked out so far, and uh, I do like it. Um, so moving on, uh, pants. Uh, in the summer, I've been using these uh, rail riders. Uh, these are the Eco Mesh. They have the, uh, the mesh that goes all the way down the leg there. These vent pretty good. I will say that um, they're not going to be as durable as some of the other uh, thicker, you know, like BDUs and, and cotton type pants. Um, and I have gotten a lot of burrs and some pilling has gone on inside the mesh area. But so far, no holes, and uh, the pocket configuration works out fairly well. It doesn't have cargo pockets, so if you, if you use those a lot during the summer, that may be, uh, maybe it won't work for you. I will say that I, I don't like sunscreen. I like to use long pants and long sleeve shirts, even in the summer, because it... Uh, I don't need to cover that with sunscreen, and it also protects me from ticks. I treat all my clothes, uh, the exterior clothes, with permethrin, and I haven't had any ticks for two years now since I've started using the stuff. So, you know, just take that however you want. Um, in the winter, and when I'm doing like maintenance and construction, I'm going to use a little bit of thicker pants. 
These are the 511 Taclite Pros. I like these. The pocket configuration is great. You've got this nice pocket in the front that works well for a cell phone. Um, a little pocket over here on the side that is like a knife pocket, but I slide the camera that I'm using right now in there. So it works really well. Um, I have had a few small holes. It's ripstop though, so I've not had any issues as far as getting massive blowouts or anything, and they're pretty comfortable. They are treated with a Teflon, so they do shed water a little bit. I know there's people have concerns about wearing cotton stuff in the winter. I don't have a problem with this. These are my winter pants. Uh, the bottom half is covered with gaiters, once again. So I don't get wet pants because any mud, snow, slush, that sort of thing is going to brush off from the gaiters. So that takes care of that. I, um, I do use a belt with these. I've kind of leaned a little bit more towards a cotton type belt. I find it fits better once I'm wearing a pack. It doesn't bunch up a little bit. And um, I do like wearing a belt because I have put a, a dangler loop on my belt knife. Um, it's not closed, it's a tool. We'll talk about that later. But it works out well for me. Um, I wear uh, just synthetic boxers. I've found the, uh, the Under Armour Eco Mesh boxers. They vent really well and they, were, they did, did really well in the summer. Um, so and when I'm hiking, uh, I just unzip my fly and I get a little bit more venting action with the Eco Mesh and nobody's going to complain because, you know, I'm, I'm a nasty hiker. Uh, shirt wise, I've been using this uh, Ex Officio. This is uh, Air Flight, I believe is what it is. This, this is not a bad material. I like the material. I think the execution as a hiking shirt is not exactly great. Uh, the venting on the sides here, as you can see, is pretty much right where your hip belt's going to close it off. Uh, obviously, if you're wearing a backpack, the venting on the back gets closed off by the backpack. But as a shirt, it's not bad. The material is really good. Uh, so that works out well for summer. One of the things that I'm kind of switching to is using a, um, an Under Armour compression. I've got white for the summer, black for kind of the winter, and then I'll just wear a t-shirt. I bought this for the uh, hunting season, and it works out well. I find I vent a little bit better with this two sort of shirt uh, combo. You could probably get away with one if you look like, you know, Iron Man or something like that, but when you look like me, you want to cover it up a little bit. And this also gives me some visibility. You could use uh, in the summer something like this with like a, a cotton shirt because the cotton is going to hold a little bit of the, the moisture and kind of keep you cool down. So anyway, moving on to um, uh, more towards uh, into the, uh, the winter. Well, let me touch on this real quick. Sorry, kind of jumping around here. Uh, rain here, I'll use uh, dry ducks. Pants, I don't really wear pants much, mainly because I have the gaiters. But uh, if it's really heavy raining and I need to put pants on, I'll use these. They suck. They, they, don't, they don't breathe at all. They do kind of fall apart, as you can see um, at the bottom there. They've kind of gotten wore out. I may try to go either to a rain skirt or some other option uh, next year. But so far, it's, just, it's worked. Um, Rain jacket I have right here. This is a uh, Marmot Super Mic Super Mica Plus, I think is what it is. Um, I really like this as a rain jacket. It's got a decent hood with a bill. It's got pit zips. So if you if you don't have a rain jacket and you're looking for stuff like that, uh, think about adding just a little bit of extra weight and get those those venting on the pits. It really helps out. This is great when it's like um, let's say 30 degrees and raining. You know, when you get that freezing rain right around that, I can wear my base layer underneath. I put this on there, undo the, the pit zips, and I don't, I don't uh, overheat too, too much. So um, let's just talk real quick about uh, um, other clothes, like in the winter. Uh, for a shirt, I've got this, this uh, APX. This is made by Russell Outdoors. I don't think you can find this anymore, but this is a merino wool type uh, blend shirt. It's a quarter zip and I'll pretty much wear this as my base layer all the way down to 30. I I sweat a lot so when I get hiking you know it really uh, I don't wear much you know I don't put a jacket on there. Uh, if I get a little chilled I will pull out my Patagonia uh, Houdini. This is a wind shirt. Uh, this works really great um, for those those early morning when you get up and, and maybe you know, it's a little chilly 
or if it's super cold but I'm hiking, I'll put that on because that's going to vent better than uh, the raincoat or another thicker layer, you know, like like a you know like a heavier weight uh, fleece or uh, long underwear. I find that 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 combination works well. Um, I do like to carry clothes specifically for sleep, and I'll state that um, even in the summer, I'm going to carry a pair of cotton boxers. Uh, this is a, a shirt I got uh, from REI, actually, at uh, one of the events, uh, National Trail Days, I believe. This was just a, a raffle. This is a bamboo cotton uh, blend. This thing is fantastic. I love it. Um, it's pretty light, you know. I mean, it's, it's a cotton t-shirt or whatever, but the fabric on it is great. I like to get out of synthetic clothes and put on cotton when I'm sleeping because it helps absorb some of the, the sweat you might get in sleeping in the summer and in the winter it just it just works well so uh, in the winter if it is colder I will put on um, I have these this merino wool blend long underwear this is a lightweight and that's pretty much all I'll sleep in my sleeping gear is is pretty much rated I can get down to probably about 10 degrees without having to resort to adding extra clothes in there so I'm pretty pretty confident we'll talk about that once we get sleeping gear I picked these up at uh, Costco, I believe. They're Paradox, Par Paradox brand, and they're blend, but the merino wool is nice. And this is just a, a lightweight uh, REI um, long underwear. It's whatever their generic one is. It's like 20 bucks. This is, I, I believe, uh, Polar Tech or, or something along those lines. So um, around camp, I will... Um, I use this uh, fleece. This is a grid fleece. Any generic grid fleece will work. This is the Terramar Ecolator 3. I really like this. I'll carry this in the summer as well as sort of my only jacket just in case if temps are going to dip down into the 60s, you know, or the 50s. You, you may get a little chill, and it's always nice having a backup in case, and it's not really that heavy. Uh, as it gets into the cooler, this is the new edition. This is the Mountain Hardware Ghost Whisper. I can layer that with all of this stuff. I need to put the raincoat if I brought it. If there's no rain in the forecast, a lot of times I won't bring it. Um, just because it's just extra weight and I can shell up with the uh, Houdini. I put the Houdini on top of everything to act as my shell. And if there's any sort of mist, fog, or light sprinkling, this has the durable water coating that it'll, it'll protect against that. And so far, that has worked out well. Um, extra things that I'll wear uh, on my head, I, I like to wear a hat. Sometimes I'll do a wide brim hat in the summer or even in the winter. Uh, sometimes I'll just do a uh, baseball hat. It just kind of depends on what's going on. Uh, this is a, a new uh, new hat I got from my mom. It's a nice Superior Hiking Trail hat, but it's it's got the vents on top. Another good one to look at if you're looking for a nice baseball hat is the uh, Sunday afternoon hat. I forget who makes it, but uh, it has some nice venting as well. Um, the one thing that comes with me, even in the summer, as far as insulation and in the winter, is my wool buff. I can't say enough things about this. This is the number one piece of equipment that I'll always bring. It is great. If you're slightly cold, put it around your neck. You'll heat up that blood. You'll heat up the rest of your body. It works great on your head. When I sleep, um, because I use a quilt and I don't have a mummy bag top, I um, I'll wear just a, like a little beanie. I can wear this around camp as well. So at night I'll put the um, the buff around my neck and pull it up over the beanie as well. It keeps the beanie on my head while I'm sleeping, keeps my ears warm. So basically the only thing I have open is my face. And so multi-use gear that I can use outside of the sleeping bag, and I don't have that extra weight of the sleeping bag mummy bag. So uh, during the summer, I'll also bring a head net. Uh, this is a um, Sea to Summit head net. It works real well with the wide brim hat. It'll also work well with just a regular uh, baseball hat. I'll bring uh, some wool gloves. These are just military surplus type wool gloves. I got the fingerless variety and the regular. It just depends on whatever I kind of grab. I will also bring a, a pair of synthetic sort of liners. These are almost a little synthetic fleecy, but they're super thin. These work real nice uh, with your trekking poles. So there's, you know, it's hot. 
And it, it's cold enough that your fingers kind of get a little nippy, but if you put on like full gloves, you're going to be way too hot. So these work real nice. So do the, uh, the fingerless ones. It'll help keep you not too hot, but protect you. Uh, in the deep winter, I will bring a face mask. I picked this one up at um, REI, you know. Um, this would be something that I would sleep in and probably not necessarily hike in, unless it was really ridiculous cold and that doesn't happen around here. But this is nice um, to, to sleep in sometimes when it gets super cold. Keeps your cheeks from getting too cold. And uh, I'll also either bring uh, these Under Armour running type gloves. These would be my secondary thicker gloves. Um, they don't necessarily work with the liners, but I could put these on if it's super windy and uh, they'll, they'll work well. Or um, in super cold, I have these Columbia uh, Bugaboo gloves. I couldn't find them, but they're the thick kind of puffy gloves. Uh, one thing that I just realized I forgot to put up here was uh, in the Mount Laurel Design rain mitts. I got these from my mom as sort of a gift. And they are super awesome. They will save your fingers and bacon. So if it's raining out, your hands are going to get wet. And obviously they're going to get cold, especially if you're around that, you know, that 30 degree freezing rain, right? You know, 40 degree. So these rain mitts work really well with the uh, tracking poles. They're expensive, but something like that is a useful item to have. You could also bring in a couple Ziploc bags and just use those, but they, they're not going to breathe as well. And these have the nice cinches and things like that, so they work well with the rain gear. Um, at camp, I always take off my shoes. I have a, a pair of thick uh, wool socks that I put on that are my sleep socks, and then I'll put on Crocs. I know Crocs are funny, but they're light. I can carry these as water crossing shoes, so they're going to work better than flip flops. They're going to stay on my feet, and um, you know, in the summer, I can walk around with those barefoot and not worry about poking my feet with anything and my feet will breathe the important thing is to take those shoes off and let your feet breathe because otherwise you're going to end up with blisters and you're going to end up with other foot funkiness i guess would be the uh the option so i kind of breezed through it i hope i caught everything on there that kind of explains the clothing system that i use and i'll just layer up you know in the winter it's going to be that base layer and then the wind shirt and once I get to camp, then I can either, you know, throw on the fleece, throw on uh, my Mountain Hardware Ghost Whisperer, and then the shell on top of that. Those are all three layers that I can go, and that's going to get me down pretty low. Keep in mind that I, I mainly hike solo, so when I'm at camp, I don't really need to sit around and do much, so I can just hop into my sleeping bag, so I don't need a whole lot of extra insulation. And I can easily add a medium weight. To any of this stuff so if I need to bring an extra layer of insulation I can just add another one in so that kind of covers all that so if you have any questions let me know uh, post in the comments below or stick it up on the Facebook page and I will be back with uh, the rest of the gear and we'll try to break that up either into two parts or, or I don't know depends on how much I babbled you know which I have a tendency to do so we're just remember the life's adventure and get out there and have one. <laughs>